Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm super excited to announce that I've joined the Linda Canasi design team for 2019. Woohoo! We are celebrating today with a very first blog hop and I've got a fun card, actually a whole set of cards for you, but I'm just going to walk you through one. I made uh, fun wiper cards using the Spring Things die set. Look, isn't it cute? You just pull and the little bird pops up. Now this die set is it's awesome. There are a ton of floral pieces in there. There are a couple of uh, nesting labels, and then we've got a bird, a bee, um, some hearts, and even a butterfly. What I'm doing first is laying out all of the uh, floral dies that I'm going to use, and also the bird and the bee. And I'm, I'm just putting them onto a, a quarter sheet of cardstock because I have a bunch of those already pre-cut and uh, ready to run through my big shot whenever I want. And you see me um, taking some purple tape and I'm just applying that to the uh, to the back of the dies. And you saw me put the tape in my hand first and then touch it a whole bunch. I'm trying to reduce some of the extra tackiness um, around the edges. And then I'm also gonna take this pokey tool and I will poke a hole through um, each of the dies so that after I run it through, if uh, the, the paper pieces are stuck in there, I can just pop them out with a stylus. Uh, it, it's easier to do that now while you can see through it. If you have the, uh, the paper already punched out, then it's hard to see where some of those little tiny holes will be. So I just go ahead and do that first. If you ever watch It's Me JD, um, she calls this a web. It's a good idea. Uh, if you've been following me on um, my YouTube videos, then you know that my die, uh, die cutting plates are getting old and it was definitely time to replace my cutting plate. So I took my old top plate that I never cut on and I'm making that my new bottom plate and putting on um, a new top plate, the pretty little glitter one. Thank you, Linda. That was a gift from her. Then I will go ahead and uh, punch out my first set of dies here and I'm just cutting them all out of uh, white cardstock. You can cut these out of different color papers if you want but I want to add a, a lot of color to my cards so I'm gonna just punch them all out of white it's easier and um, I'll just go ahead and color them with watercolor. I'm also going to use these two nesting dies. First I will uh, cut them together and I'm going to take uh, some more of the purple tape just to make sure that I hold them evenly spaced apart. And then when I cut them out together, I'll get a nice little frame and then a smaller piece that I'll use later for something else. Then I also want to cut just the large label out again. And I'll use that for my sentiment. Now off camera, I went ahead and I die cut about four sets of the floral pieces for each card because for each flower, I want it to have three layers. And then I just mixed and matched them until I got about 10 different flowers. And um, for each one of those labels, I actually cut three of the frames. Now for the bird, it has a, a separate wing that gets cut out. So I cut that out a bunch of times too. And I'll use the extras as leaves. So it, it can do double duty as a leaf or as a wing. And then I am, I'm just going to walk you through one uh, batch, uh, one set of die cuts for, for one card here. I did uh, go through and end up cutting out enough to make five cards, which I'm glad I did because it was so much fun and I had everything out at the same time. It, it actually didn't take too much longer at all. And all I'm doing is laying down some quick watercolor. I have my uh, Prima watercolors here. I have a, a third palette that's out of uh, frame, but I've got the pastels, the classics, and the tropicals. And I'm just going to lay a, a light wash of color down and then I come back in as it starts to dry a little bit, I'll come back in with a darker color just in um, some of the areas where you would have a little more shadow. It takes absolutely no skill to do this. I never 
claim to be an artist. <laughs> I don't draw. Um, I'm just coming in and, and adding a, a splash of color here. And most of the, uh, the details will get covered up because everything is going to get layered. So you just want to add hints of color. And like I said, you can cut this out of colored paper if you want, but I, I knew I would be coming in and adding some details um, with darker colors. So I just cut it all out of white cardstock. It was easier. And I'm not even using watercolor paper here because I'm not adding a ton of color. I do go over a couple of these pieces a few times, but it's totally fine if they curl because I'm going to add some more curl to it anyhow. So I just used some white cardstock that was in my stash. And I decided that I wanted to color the flowers um, two of each color. So I've got pink, a uh, darker yellow, a lighter yellow, and then I'll do blue and purple. And to give them a little more variation, uh, I'm doing light, medium, and dark for each set. And so one set of them, one set of flowers will have the darker petals on the bottom and the lightest on top. And then for the other color, um, or for the other flower in the same color, I'll do the opposite. We'll have, start with the lightest and end with the darkest. And these are watercolors as normal, um, as watercolors normally do. They'll dry back a little bit lighter. In fact, that happens with pretty much any medium. As the water evaporates, the color will lighten up a bit. So as they start to dry, some of them I'll, I'll decide I want to add a little more color. Some of them I just want to start adding a little bit of texture to. So I'm adding a little bit darker lines or dots, uh, especially to the flower centers. I want to put some dots down. And then uh, for the uh, bigger petals, I'll just add some slightly darker lines. And I'm just being pretty haphazard about it. Uh, the whole point is just to add texture. You won't see most of it. You'll just get a hint of it. And for the center of the flowers, um, I'll come back in with some little dots and then I'll let it sit there for a minute. Um, it's not completely dry, but as it starts to dry, some of the, the deeper color will soak in a bit. And then I can come back with some uh, water or just a lighter shade of the same color and kind of blend it away. So you still get a, a little hint of it, but it's not as as sharp as if you had left those dots um, just on their own. So I'll finish up these flowers and get all my little details in place. And then I'll do the bee. And the bee is really neat. So the, the three little stripes on its back are die cut um, in. So I don't have to, to guess at where to paint them. I just color in the little stripes. And first I washed it with yellow. And then as it um, started to run out of color, I put a little bit of yellow onto his wings. And then I'm letting it dry while I paint the bird. And I can come back and add a little bit of gray to his wings after the yellow starts to dry so it doesn't blend. It, it's separate lines. And as the first coat on the bird dries, I can add more. And notice that I am not overlapping the blue and the yellow. I do not want to make green there. I'm, I'm trying to keep those separate. And if it does overlap a little bit, it's not a big deal because that separate wing will cover most of it. But... Um, I just want to give it some bold color. And for the sentiment strip, um, you see that little piece of purple cardstock that I brought in in the corner there? That's just so I can, um, that's the same color that the card base will be, so I, I just want to get in the, the neighborhood of, of that color for the sentiment strip. And uh, I just painted it with an ombre. Then I'll take all of these pieces after the uh, watercolor is mostly dried, and I will spritz them with a nice heavy dose of uh, Tattered Angels, the Glimmer Mist. This stuff is awesome. I have the diamond and I also have the pearl and I cannot tell you 
which is which. I don't know which one I used. They both look identical to me. <laughs> I can't tell them apart. So if you're on the fence and don't know which one to get, it doesn't matter. They're the same. Um, for just a couple of the, the flower pieces, I took some Heidi Swap color shine in the gold and added some gold highlights just to those. And oh, I love them. They turn out so pretty. It's a transparent gold, so you'll still see some of that color through. Um, and then after everything dried, I grabbed my mouse pad and a large ball stylus. And I'm just going to start shaping these flowers. And it, it's fast. This is fast and easy. You don't have to be perfect. For the, uh, the flowers that have the, like it's a half inch circle, um, instead of curling the sides up um, at the edges, I flipped it over. And then when I shape it, it, it creates a bit of a dome. So the, the edges will go down. And um, I think it looks nice for, for those flowers. For all of the other flowers where it has sort of a spiky edge in the center, I just curl them all in the same direction. And you can see this is nothing fancy. I'm, I'm just going around the edges just to, to get some curl into those petals. And here I am again, I'm doming the back side of the, the big round centers. And then just the front side for the other pieces. And I wish you could see the shine a little bit better. In person, it is just, it's beautiful. It's not too gaudy. It's not like stickles where you have a just an overwhelming amount of glitter. It's just a, a really nice shine. And that little hint of gold is, is really nice too. And so for some of these pieces like this one, it's covered in gold. I, uh, I didn't want to rub it off. So I was just uh, shaping from the backside. And also if you don't have a big ball stylus, you can use the tip of a paintbrush or something that's blunt. You can even just use your fingers and the palm of your hand to shape these flowers. You, you just want to give them a, a little bit of body. Once they're all shaped, um, I glued mine together using PVA glue and I, I keep it in a fine line bottle. It's just handy for me. I, I can apply just the right amount of glue. And for all of the pieces that are all curled in the same direction, I will glue them uh, flat to each other. So one layer to the next to the next and it's fine. They, they'll still keep a lot of their shape without flattening up too much. For the flowers that have the domed center, I will glue the, the two layers of petals together. And then for the dome itself, I'll just bring in a little foam dot and put that on the back. And then I can pop it up in the center and that keeps um, some of the volume in place. Now for the bird, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just give it a little bit of shape with a stylus. And uh, the same for the wing. And I'm also going to pop the wing up with another little foam dot. For the swiper itself, the, I mean, the bird is going to fit into the swiper, but I, I've got plenty of room in there, so I can have kind of a chunky accent. I'll show you a couple tricks for that, but um, don't worry, you can have a little bit of body in there. Now for the bee, remember each one of those little uh, stripes is already cut out. They're just holding in place um, pressure fit. So I'll use a, a thin strip of foam tape to make sure that they stay locked together to the, the bee's body and then I'll add some shape to the wings and to the leaves. It's very easy and quick to do. Now, after I've got all of the, uh, the pieces shaped, I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue together the layers of the frame for my sentiment. And I, I just cut three pieces and I'll glue them together. The top layer actually has some of that uh, shimmer mist already on it. And I didn't want to spray the shimmer mist onto it after I glued the three layers together because this glue is water soluble and the frame is pretty thin and delicate. 
So I wanted to um, get the shimmer on there and have it dry so that the frame wouldn't warp. It'll stay in, in the right shape without getting wet. Now before I glue the frame to the sentiment strip, I want to go ahead and stamp it. You'll notice I've got um, the white piece of card stock that the uh, strip was cut out of and I put that into my misty, and then I can pop the piece in place and hold it down and in case I need to stamp it again if it shifts I know I can get it lined back up into exactly the same spot. So I've got um, happy birthday on my misty. that's from the um, spring thing stamp set and I went ahead and prepped the paper with an anti-static powder tool and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp it with Versamark. And I'm going to stamp it a second time. This pad is, actually this pad is almost 20 years old, and it still works great. I keep telling myself one of these days I'll replace it with one of the new fancier pads just to try them out. But this pad is is great. I haven't needed to re-ink it or anything, and like I said, it's, it's like 20 years old. Um, so... After I get it inked, I'll pour on white embossing powder, and then I'm just going to heat set it with my heat tool. That'll melt it all together and give me a nice raised shiny sentiment. And that spring, uh, the spring thing stamp set coordinates nicely with these dies, and there are a lot of uh, nice mix and match sentiments in there. So now that I've got my sentiment stamped on, I can go ahead and start putting the wiper together. You'll see I've got three pieces here, the front, the back, and the wiper mechanism. The back is what I'm scoring first. It is four and a quarter by six and a half inches, and I am scoring it at one and a quarter inch and one and three quarters inch. The front of the card is half an inch shorter, so it's three and a quarter inches by six and a half, and I scored it in the same places. And I'll have all these measurements on my blog, so don't worry. And then the wiper mechanism is one inch wide, and I think it's like two and a half inches. It doesn't really matter how tall it is because we're going to trim it down. Um, just give yourself a, a couple inches there. And this is textured paper, so I was just making sure that I was going to score the right side of it. I marked it at half an inch from the top and half an inch from the side because there is a half inch gap between the Z folds for the front and back of my card. So that is important. If you're going to make a wiper card, you want the you want to have a Z fold card and the space between the two um, score lines is how wide you want the little fold to be on your wiper. So mine is half an inch wide, so I want a half inch um, fold. Uh, the, I want the little dog ear to be half an inch wide. Um, and then you want the whole wiper to be a little bit wider. So that's why I've got it one inch there. It can be, um, it can be anything bigger than, than the uh, half inch there. So one inch is perfect. And then after I fold up my little Z folds on the front and the back, I'm going to glue the wiper in place. It's not all the way at the top, it's a little bit down. And you'll notice that I only put glue on the little corner, the little dog ear there, and I lined it up with the first fold of the, uh, the front of the card, and I'm actually working on the back side of the front piece and I just flipped it towards myself. It makes it easier to line everything up. And then I'm gonna make sure that I've got it in the right place. And I'm gonna start uh, to figure out where I want the bird to sit on here. Now, in this case, I did not um, line up the... Uh, the front of my card is shorter than the back of my card. I wanted the bouquet to look like it was floating. So I've got a half inch gap from the top and the bottom. You can have the front and the back the same height if you want. That's totally fine and, and a lot of people do that. Um, in this case, I knew that the tail was going to stick up above the um, edge of the front of my card 
but that was okay because I'm going to cover it up with the, flor the floral pieces. So I just marked where I want the bird to be. And I do want to make sure that his beak and his feet are on the purple cardstock, just so that there's a little more support behind it. And I trim away any extra so that it won't show above his feet. Below his feet is fine. It doesn't bother me that, that that's going to show. But everything above I want to uh, cut away. And then I'm going to use a little more of the PVA glue, glue him in place. And adding a little bit to the edge of the purple because I don't know exactly where to stop with the glue on the, the back side of the bird. And when I push it down, I'm pushing lightly and around the edges. Um, I don't want to lose that dome shape that I've added to his body. So I'm just gently pushing it into place. And see how the tail's going to stick up? That's fine. I'll cover that up with the floral pieces. Now before I finish the bird, I want to add a little bit of um, black ink to his eye. And again, you don't even have to think about where to place it because it's already punched out with the dye, which makes it handy. Now we can go ahead and uh, glue the two card layers together, the front and back together. And I'm just adding glue to the flap, the, the first flap on the front. And this will attach to the left side of the back. And I'm just going to make sure that I don't accidentally over glue. So you'll see me open it up a bit here and make sure that no glue has come out across the edge and is sticking to anything I don't want it to. We just want that, that flap on the left. And then add some more glue to the flap on the right. I'm going to make sure it all lines up first. Now a little bit of glue on the back side here. And that is how you make a wiper card. Very easy. You just need a front, a back, and a little rectangle for the, the wiper. Now all we have left to do is to decorate it. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the frame to the label, to the sentiment strip there. And that poor sentiment strip is not as flat as it once was. First I uh, painted it so it warped a little bit. And then I embossed it so it warped a little bit more. <laughs> so when I glue the frame onto it, I'm going to weigh it down with an acrylic block just to help straighten it back out a bit. And once that's dry, I will take it and I'm going to line it up on the card front where I want it. Basically, I'm going to center it up on that card there. And then I'll take a pencil and I will loosely trace around it just lightly. Um, I want to cover everything um, with the flowers and the leaves underneath it so it looks like the sentiment is popping up on top of a bouquet. So if I have the outline there in place, I know exactly where to, to place my flowers and let them overlap a little bit underneath where the strip will go. And I'm going to actually start with the flowers first. It's easy to tuck the, the leaves inside the flowers, um, the placement of the flowers I want to get down first. So I'll glue all of these. And for this one that's hanging off the edge, I'm just going to glue this edge. And it, it's fine, especially with this glue. It's nice and strong. Once it dries, that, that flower is staying there. I'll just get these all in place and I'm saving that big pink one at the top for the very last because I want to add some greenery underneath it to make sure I really cover up that tail a little bit more and it'll be easier to to get the leaves underneath it now rather than after. 
So I'm going to play around with it a little bit and figure out which leaves I want there. And I decided on this cluster because it's nice and wide. Gives me a lot of coverage right there to hide that tail. And I'm not even worried if a little bit of the tail sticks up. There's so much other color going on that you don't notice it until you actually pull the sides and, and see the bird pop up. So I'll go ahead and get this last flower glued in place. And for some of these pieces with the little spiky edges, I'm going to come back in and just kind of give them a little more body again because they got smashed a little bit when I was gluing them down. And then I will quickly arrange the greens and get those all glued in place. And I'm also putting that sentiment strip there just so that I know um, if there's any overlap underneath to cover up with the leaves. And for some of these really small parts, it's hard to get your fingers in underneath the flowers. You don't want to smash the flowers down any more than you have to, so I use a stylus just to help me push things down and hold things in place. Now it's time for the sentiment strip. Uh, remember that bee already had a piece of um, foam tape on his back, so I'll pop it in place. And then for the strip, I will add a double layer of foam tape, and I want to make sure that it's not overlapping any of the the flower petals because then it might pop it up too much. And having the um, the foam tape on the back will help flatten out that sentiment too. Any warping that was still there will get pulled flat onto the card. And that's it. Isn't it pretty? I wish you could see the shine in person. There's there's a lot of shimmer on this card. It makes it beautiful. I do have one more step. This is optional. And in fact, I actually only did it on this one card. Um, most of these cards I will send out to other crafters. So everybody that's a crafter already knows what a wiper card is and you don't need the arrows but if you're going to send this to somebody who is not a crafter go ahead and put some arrows on the side so people know to pull and that's how the uh the bird will pop up isn't it cute i love how this turned out here it is again a little close up if you like today's card, please go ahead and hit the um, like button, give me a thumbs up, and consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, click that bell so you don't miss any notifications. You'll see that I uh, did switch up the sentiments on a couple of these. Some of them say sending you hugs. I love the way they turned out. Go ahead and head over to my blog for links to everything that I used, and also for links to the other bloggers on our hop today. We've got a fabulous team. They've got some amazing projects. You're going to want to check them out. As always, thanks for watching.